All right, gang, welcome to Solving Trig Equations. Um, this is, believe it or not, this is our last big topic of the school year. Uh, we're going to spend a few days on it. Um, it shouldn't be hard. People think this, this topic is so hard. Um, it shouldn't be. If you're good at solving algebra equations and you were good at the speed quiz, then you should be able to do this with no problem. I want you to view these equations today as regular algebra equations. And here's what I mean. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the notes up on the screen. This first one says 2 cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. I want you to think of it as 2x minus 1 equals 0. And if I gave you 2x minus 1 equals 0, you'd have no problem solving this equation. So we're going to treat it like a regular algebra equation at first. Okay, so let's solve. Uh, add one to both sides. Divide by two. Okay, and we get cosine of theta equals a half. What would happen if you solved this problem using your calculators right now? You would type in inverse cosine of one half and it would present you with an answer. What answer would that be? It would say 60, right? It would say 60 degrees. But that's not the only angle that has a cosine of one half. And so that's going to be the trouble with this section is figuring out all of the right answers. So 60 is clearly a right answer. But did you look over here? Did you see that in the problem I gave you a specified domain to work with? I said, I want all angles between 0 and 360 for which this equation is true. We know it's true at 60, but are there other places that it's true? That's the hard part, kind of. So here's what we got to think. Cosine's a half. That's positive, right? Where's cosine positive? Quadrants one and four. One and four, one and four. So I got 60 degrees. That's in quadrant one. Well, what's the angle in quadrant four that has a reference angle of 60? It's 300, yes? 300 has a reference angle of 60. 300's in quadrant four. 300's an answer. All right, so we got two answers um, to this particular equation. We're going to have equations today that might have an infinite number of answers. For now, that one has two. Okay, questions. That wasn't that bad. Second one, sine squared equals one. Again, think of it like a regular algebra equation. If it said x squared equals one, what would you do? You'd square root. So we're going to square root both sides. When you square root both sides, we're looking for how many answers, Nick? Two. Okay, so you got sine equals plus or minus one. And again, let's go look at my domain restriction. I'm talking zero to 360 again, not including 360. So you got to think to yourself, unit circle, where does sine equal one? In other words, where is the y coordinate one in a unit circle? Well, that's at 90. Then think to yourself, where is sine negative one? Where does the y coordinate in a unit circle equal negative one? Down at the bottom, right at 270. So we got two answers again. Plug either one of those into the equation at the, at the top of the page, and you get yourself something that's true. Okay. Then it gets a little bit tougher with number three. The first two were kind of straightforward. Number three... is only tougher because it makes your head hurt when you look at it. You're like, I don't know what to do. I, I think when most of you look at this, you'd probably say, ah, I don't know, subtract sine from both sides. Maybe divide both sides by sine eventually. I, I don't know what you do. But again, I want you to view this as an algebra equation. I want you to think of this as 2x squared plus x. And sweet goodness of all mother gosh, holy stuff, I hope if you had 2x squared plus x equals zero, 
you would say, oh, they got an X in common. Let's yank it out. So they have a sign in common. It's a factoring problem is what I'm trying to say. Factoring has been following us the whole year. It's going to continue to into this last section. So factor out a sign. Leaving. Okay, there is a factored out sign. Now, please, please, please tell me that we've retained some Algebra 1 knowledge from the last couple of years that when you have something times something equaling zero, one of the somethings has to equal zero. Either or one of those two things has to be true. Ah, that equation is already solved. This one There, I skipped a step, I solved it. So I have two possible solutions here and I gotta figure out what theta might be. Now, before I even look at the domain restriction this time, cause it's confusing, I don't wanna look at it. Let's think, where does sine equal zero? Where does sine equal zero? Where is the Y coordinate on the unit circle equal to zero? Where are you on the X axis? So you're on the X axis at zero degrees, at 180, at 360, at 540, every 180 degrees, you find yourself on the x-axis. Well, look at this domain restriction. It says we're, first of all, it's in radians. Woo! And second of all, it says we're only considering values between 180 and 360, not including 180 and 360. There's no equal sign there. It's just strictly less than. So this first equation, has solutions, zero, not in the domain, 180, almost in the domain, but not quite, 360, just a little bit too big for the domain. So from this first equation, I don't get any answers that work with this domain. I get lots of answers, but none of them work with this domain. Hope that makes sense. Second part, where does sine equal negative a half? Well, first of all, where does sine equal positive one half? Think of your speed quiz, your triangles. Where does sine equal a half? 30, right? 30 degrees. So I need sine to be negative. What quadrants is sine negative? You should have said three and four. So I need quadrants three and four with a reference angle of 30. Good news, our domain is quadrants three and four. So that's where we're looking. I need a reference angle of 30. So in quadrant three, a reference angle of 30 would be 210, yes? And in quadrant four, a reference angle of 30 would be 330. So that's it, except Eh, since the domain was given in radians, we really should have our answers in radians. So speed quiz practice, change 210 into radians. Ready, go. And 330 into radians. Ready, go. And there you go. Okay, so factoring was part of that problem. That is so nifty. I love factoring. Factoring is the bomb. Okay. Two more. <laughs> Look at this one. Kind of makes my head hurt just looking at it. It has a root in it. Gross. Okay. Again, think of it as, as an algebra problem. If it said x squared minus root 3x equals zero, I hope you would say, hey, they both have an x. Let's factor, let's yank it out. So let's yank out a tangent. Not too bad. And now we've got something times something equals zero. So one of the somethings has to equal zero. So one of those two things has to be true. Now, the first thing says tangent equals zero. 
Please remember tangent is sine over cosine. And so you need sine over cosine to equal zero. Well, if sine over cosine has to equal zero, that means the numerator has to be zero. So I need locations where sine equals zero. So where does sine equal zero? We just talked about this. It equals zero at zero degrees, 180, 360, 540, 720, 900, 1080, blah, 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 etc. So look at the domain. Here's what that means. That means I don't want to restrict my domain to one trip around the unit circle or two trips around the unit circle or a half a trip around the unit circle. I want every possible answer that exists. So for tangent equals zero, I want zero, 180, 360, 540, 720, 900, 1080, 1260, 1440, 1620, 1800, et cetera. I want them all. And you know what? I also want negative answers. So from zero, I could go backwards and say negative 180, negative 360, negative 540, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's too much to write. That's an infinite number of answers, and my hand would get tired. So we have some shorthand, and here's how we're going to write it. Starting at zero, I'm going to write the zero. I wouldn't have to write the zero this time, but I'm going to write the zero. So starting at zero and going both up and down. 180 degrees, but that answer right there just says zero, 180, and negative 180. I need more. I need to go up 180 and down 180 lots of times. And so we have to put a variable there. And traditionally we use K. So what that says is that says start at zero and go up and down 180 as many times as you want. That's what that says. I hope that makes sense. If it didn't make sense, play that back. Okay, the other part, let's solve this. You gotta say to yourself, hmm, do I remember my triangles very well? Where does tangent equal root three? Think about your 30, 60, 90 triangle. Tangent is root three at 60 degrees, 60, okay? But not just 60. Where else is tangent positive? In quadrant three. So 60 is for sure an answer. But so is an angle in quadrant three with a 60 degree reference angle. So go to quadrant three, think about a 60 degree reference angle. Where does that put you? Puts you at 240. Then what if we went a second trip around the unit circle? Back here again at 60 plus another 360 would be 420. What about in quadrant three if I made another rotation around the circle, 240 plus 360? So that's gonna be my list of answers, but what about negative? I don't even know about that notation. That's not how we're going to write it, but I'm just showing you those are all the legitimate answers. So there's a pattern here, of course. From 60, we go up 180, up 180, up 180, or down 180. So this time I'm starting at 60. Uh, where am I going to write this? How about up here? Up or down? 180 degrees as many times as you want. So the two things I have circled or ellipsed or whatever you want to call it, the two things I have contained represent all of the answers to this problem. You can either take an angle that is a multiple of 180, positive or negative, or you can take an angle in 60 plus or minus 180K Plug it in the original equation and get yourself a correct answer. So there's lots of correct answers for number four. And that's how that works. Was that tough? Might have been. One more. Last one. Looks dreadful. So some of you are going to look at this and you're going to say, ah, yank out a sign, except not all the terms have a sign. So that's going to be bad factoring. That would never work. 
But what you should see again, treat these like an algebra problem. It says 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. That's a smiley face problem. That's a, uh, that's a factoring problem that we're, that we're certainly good at. So I'm going to set up my two sets of parentheses. Let's factor. Okay, to make 4 sine squared, I got choices. It's either 4 sine times sine or 2 sine times 2 sine. This one's kind of easy. I'm going to pick the right choice first. So 2 sine times 2 sine is clearly 4 sine squared. I need to multiply to make 1. Not too many choices. Either 1 and 1 or negative 1 and negative 1. And look. My middle term is negative. I know it's going to be negatives. You can check that if you want. You can foil it out, make sure it works, but that's how that factors. So we've got thing times thing equals zero. So one of the things has to be zero. Well, those are the same thing. So I'm not going to think about them twice. I'm just going to think about them once. So here we go. Let's solve this. So my answers are where sine is a half. And again, if you use your calculator and type inverse sine of a half, you're gonna get 30 degrees and you're gonna write down 30 degrees and you're gonna have a right answer. But 30 degrees is one of an infinite number of answers that makes this problem true. So 30 is right, it's just not all the way right. I wanna make sure we understand that. So 30 is right. What other quadrant is sine positive in? Two, you said two, right? So go to quadrant two, use a reference angle of 30. And what do you get? In quadrant two, reference of 30. Remember reference angles are always from the x-axis. So 30 degrees away from the x-axis is that, right? 150. So maybe these are going to go up not by 180 each time, but by, what is that, 120? Let's think about this. What's the next angle that would have, um, that would be true in this particular situation? So go from 30, go around another rotation. What is 30 plus 360? 390, uh-oh. 150 to 390, that's 240. That was 120, that's no good. Hmm. How about from 150, go another time around the circle. 150 plus another 360 gets you to where? Oh boy, 390 to 510, that's another 120. So my intervals in this problem are not, uh, they're not staying constant. That's up 120, that's up 240, that's up 120. I bet the next one's up 240. So to write our answers to this problem, I'm going to have to do two separate things. I got two patterns going on. I've got my quadrant one stuff. So every other angle is a quadrant one angle. And I've got my quadrant two stuff. And those are going to have to be described in two different ways. So the first one starts at 30. Goes up or down, don't forget the minus, by 360. As many times as you want, that's why the K. The quadrant two angles start at 150 and go up or down as many times as you want by 360. That is a correct answer for number five. Woo! That's solving some tricky equations. Uh, we did a couple real easy ones, a couple hard ones. Uh, I hope you followed that. If you're good with your speed quiz and your triangle 360, 90 stuff, these shouldn't be that hard. Just remember, they're usually going to involve simple algebraic expressions, except with trig words in them. So you're going to solve them using your algebra skills, using factoring, using 
addition, subtraction, stuff that's very simple for you guys. Uh, okay, long video. Where were we at? 20 minutes. Eh, not bad. If we were in class. I don't know how this would have gone. Maybe even longer. Who knows? If you have questions, what are you supposed to do? Good. Email me. Call me. Come to my house. Send me a telegram. I don't care what you do. Uh, do some air writing with an airplane in the sky. That'd be cool. Okay, I'm going to stop. Um, we're going to spend several days on this this week. So take your time. Process it slowly. Go back and watch it again. you got nothing else to do, right? Um, and then let me know if you have any questions. The assignments, of course, will be on Classroom. Keep working. Um, you guys are doing great. We've had almost 100% participation on every assignment, uh, which is great. I love you guys for that. Uh, keep it up. I really miss seeing you. I don't like it. Here, here's my eyes. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. Come back soon, please. Uh, hope you're doing well. Kick some butt. See ya.